Hello, hello. So it looks like there's some news with Leonardo. And I wanted to test this real quick because it's a new model with Flux. It's, it's supposed to be like an Omni model for Flux, which means editing. What do they say? Uh, you could edit, play, edit, blend seamlessly with Omni using our new inline editor experience. So we might try to play with that. I did want to generate with the model just to see how it came out. This is testing this prompt, a photorealistic portrait of a woman in a garden at sunset, etc. Uh, I like this prompt. I've tested it with other models to, to see like the detail. Like I, I remember I, ch I tested image and you could s had a f image, you know, a really great image. It had so much detail that you can see the hair on her arm. <laughs> this is pretty good. This is like really good quality. I don't think it's as good as image end, but it's really good quality. Um, I picked flex one content, the new one. Uh, and then I picked pro film photography for that. And uh, I was going to test it against some other models they have here. Uh, they also just released chat GPT image gen. Maybe we'll just do that real quick before we go to that. No, we'll return that then. Uh, they have here, let's go to flex test it against their, uh, flex dev. Phoenix isn't that great at, um, creating photorealism from my experience. Uh, it's, it's supposed to be good for prompt adherence and text rendering. Uh, it's a good model. It's a very, it's their proprietary model. It's a really good model. Uh, flex dev. Okay. Obviously we, we should be familiar with flex dev. <laughs> Uh, prompt and has we'll leave that style dynamic let's look for a photo do we have stock photo portrait cinematic uh, let's try that and we will generate and let's try another model too that's good at photos um photo reel for great cinematic outputs that's not really what we want capturing stein professional portraits let's try this model Okay, that's looking not bad. See the credit cost too, like um, for these generations. Yeah, the other, the more recent models cost more. It's pretty good. It's pretty good. I mean, it looks fake. I wouldn't call this <laughs> photorealistic, but you know, you compare that to this, right? <laughs> okay, so we looked at Flex Dev compared to content. Uh, oh, this is with Kino XL. It's not bad. Like it does look like a real person. It's not bad at all. It's Kino XL. Um, what did I pick? Portrait Perfect was okay. Fine. Um, and we wanted to test anything else hit out here. Yeah, let's do, let's just hop over to ChatGPT. Now, ChatGPT is not, I don't use ChatGPT for photo realistic, but it's, uh, it's just something for marketing. It's really great for marketing text. It's probably king of text. Um, let's just do this. Let's do um, a marketing image for AI with Apex, the Premiere, and Premiere, um, AI development agency. Let's do it like, uh, yes, yeah, let's, let's do it like that. Just see what happens. We'll generate that probably has 60. It's, you know, it's obviously more expensive. It's one of the more expensive models out there. Uh, and while that is generating, uh, the reason I am a huge fan of Leonardo besides, you know, there's a great interface here. They have, uh, they have motion model built in, which is using, a uh, I want to say one, 2.1, if I remember correctly, I can look it up for you if you want. Um, but they have a great API. You know, I've tested a lot of APIs and they are my favorite. They are my favorite API as far as video generation, not, not video generation, as far as image generation, they're my favorite API. And if I had only one choice of an API that generates both image and video, I would pick uh, Leonardo. Despite its video generation flaws, it's using a model that's not, you know, as good as like clean, for example, or, or, um, or Google's, you know, the uh, VO, uh, but it's, it's built in really nice. Like their API is really, I really like their API. Uh, I, I feel it's the best. Um, I set up little workflow here. Now don't get deceived. When you look at this, you're like, what, like, what does that have to do with Leonardo? What, why does that look like that? 
No, I'm like, basically I wrote this <laughs> workflow right here to tap into a system I already have to just take advantage of the fact that it sends it to my WhatsApp. <laughs> so that's, you know, don't get deceived. This is actually all I did right here. This is all I built right here. And what this does is you'll set a prompt. Um, you use the API to retrieve the list of models, right? Look at all these models. There's a bunch of models plus the custom models. Uh, as far as I can tell, I could be, it could be something I'm messing up, but I don't think you could access via the API, the new flux or the GPT yet. I could be wrong. If I'm wrong, please let me know. Cause I, I did want to play with that, but there is a new model called lucid realism that I played with. Um, and the idea here was, it was, it was pretty simple in uh concept. It's like, let's retrieve the entire list of models, right? Cause they include also a description. We'll just, you know, we'll use a chat GPT 4.1. So we can just throw the entire list in there and be comfortable with the context window. Right. So I'm, all this is, is flattening. It's just turning into a big old blob right here. That way you could easily throw it into chat GPT. Right. So we're taking in the prompt that we wrote and then the model list. And they're going to have the, the AI look at those and then output a, it'll make a decision about which model to choose and it'll enhance your prompt too. That's basically what we're doing here. And I just, I, I hand wrote this entire prompt. I didn't have a, I just wrote this because I was just like, oh, I was just thinking about this. This is a prompt right here that has no help. And it works. <laughs> and I was trying to get a, a chat GPT, the image generation from chat GPT to work and I couldn't get to work. So I have to double check what's good, whether it's not available yet or whether I'm messing something up. But it'll do the call, it'll do it'll choose a model, it'll do the generation prompt. It'll save the details in my uh, Airtable because you get to get a gener I, I get a generation ID and I have it sent to a webhook so I don't have to, you know, wait for it or whatever. Um, so this will send it to my webhook with a generation ID right here. Now that you've seen that, you can grab that for free. <laughs> you you could take that from for free for me. Um, no, I don't think you could actually, I think you'd need my, my API to get it, but when it, when it's done, it'll go over to here. Uh, and again, don't get it. It shouldn't be this long. <laughs> this is because I'm plugging into another system. So, but the idea is it gets the information from the job when it's complete. I save a copy of it or no, I look up the generation based on the generation ID, you know, to look up the record. Uh, then I download the image here i send an image to myself via unipilot and whatsapp um i do a little break it's not necessary but i send another image uh, another message to myself saying the job is done and then i save a copy of the image okay and then let me show you how the lucid realism came out i used the same prompt over here this prompt that i um for the photo realism i'm sorry sorry about the that okay Photorealistic portrait of a woman in a guard, a garden at sunset, et cetera, et cetera. And let me show you how the puppy came out. So this is their lucid realism model. It's pretty good. It's fast. It's really fast. The quality is very solid. Um, it's a very nice balance. I really, I, I'm impressed actually. Uh, so yeah, that's something very cool. Now, did I want to show you anything else in relation to the API at this stage? No. Um, if people are interested and this video gets some views, I could show you guys how to generate videos, um, <laughs> and other stuff through API. Also, I found that these, uh, earlier models of the motion, like 1.0, if you have a very simple image crafted from a prompt, you then could just take the motion one model, which is dirt cheap, give it a very low setting for movement and create animation for very cheap that way, which has a lot of uses actually. Um, but yeah, okay, so we'll move on to the next thing. Okay, let's go find the inline editor. <laughs> they didn't make it easy to find, did they? Let's click on image. Now let's find our new, so here's one that's created with, it works with the new editing platforms like GPT image one and also um, Flux, 
that one context. So let's see if we can figure that out here. We'll come to here. Let's just click on it. Is this it? Let's try change her hair color to blonde. Let's see what happens. Okay, let's see what happens. Okay, I changed her hair to blonde. <laughs> It's not too bad, right? I see it kept their background. Her face changed a little bit. That's not bad though. That isn't bad. That isn't bad. <laughs> yeah, okay, that's, that's pretty cool. Okay, let's try something else. Okay, let's try to check out this reference image feature. Reference up to four images and simply describe how they should come together or insert them into an existing image. Okay, let's test this. Let's do, let's add this puppy right here. Let's add this as guidance. All right. This is the only option we have. Reference, uh, image reference. References the visual style and composition of image to influence the output. Okay, we're going to reference this style and image. Uh, and we're going to have a, yeah, let's just say toned, a toned and lean athletic lady. Um, jump, kicking a soccer ball in London. Let's see what, let's see what happens. Yeah. You get it? Well, as a general, I'm going to take a look at the next, uh, uh, this is what I'm referencing, by the way. I'm referencing, I'm just referencing the email. Okay. Oh, text. Insert new text and transform language while preserving font, all while respecting the contextual replacement. Let's test that too. Okay. There you go. When you jump kicking soccer ball. Okay, well, listen, it's not perfect, but it did look that's a reference image. Yeah, you see? There's a, an add a soccer ball and add to London. So, not too bad. Okay, so we're going to create now. Actually, let's jump over to. Let's jump over to that. Um, now we'll test uh, the GPT. Go ahead, click this puppy right here. Then we'll change the text. Change the premier AI development agency to the premier AI education community. I wonder if you have to say text when you do that. I don't know, honestly. <laughs> Your guess is probably better than mine. Okay. Not perfect, but it did the job. AI education community. That's not bad. <laughs> I'm not going to complain. Okay, and then that was text, and you were going to check out. I think that was it we're going to check out for now. Adding text, changing text using reference images it is telling me I could add multiple images, but it only let me add one. So I'm not sure what that was about. Uh, but yeah, it's worth exploring. It looks very cool. It looks like it's a lot of potential. Um, yeah. Take care. Hope you enjoyed the video. Bye.